Welcome to another episode of SAP Tech Bytes. In this series where we are looking at the recent additions to the tutorial system that focus on SAP HANA Cloud and the combination with SAP Cloud Application Programming Model. In this tutorial, we will look at SAP HANA Cloud, create HANA stored procedures, and expose them as a Cloud Application Programming Model service function. So we're going to build upon the same project and further combine SAP HANA Cloud native artifacts with SAP Cloud Application Programming Model concepts. In the end, we're going to expose a SQL script stored procedure as a service function in the OData service. You will learn how to create and deploy SAP HANA Cloud SQL script stored procedures, how to create a service function, which is implemented via an SAP HANA SQL script stored procedure, and you will learn how to use a CAP service exit to implement the service function. This tutorial is designed for SAP HANA Cloud. It is not designed for SAP HANA On-Premise or SAP HANA Express Edition. This tutorial assumes that you have created the database artifacts and loaded data as explained in the previous tutorial in the series. In step one, we want to create an SAP HANA Cloud SQL Script stored procedure. So we're going to use the wizard again to create a database artifact. So let's use the command palette and the create SAP HANA database artifact. Double check that you're in the right project and that it's the DB source folder. We are doing SAP HANA Cloud and our artifact type is a uh, procedure, HDB procedure. There we are. And we need to give it a name. We want to call this sleep. Let's go ahead and create that stored procedure. And once again, it does not open automatically. You have to go into DB source and there is our sleep HDB procedure. And now it opens in the editor. Now we're going to create a really simple stored procedure that is literally going to put the thread to sleep. Um, this is kind of nice for when you want to do uh, simulated performance testing, when you want the process to actually take a little bit of time, but you don't want to just put something into a processing loop. This will free the, the thread on the HANA side and, and not uh, hold something, but it will uh, put the uh, put it to sleep and then wait back up after however many seconds that we say. So we're going to say, uh, go to sleep for 10 seconds and then respond back. And this is nice. We can test this from the OData service and, and we'll know that we're hitting our, our sort of procedure because it will, you know, take 10 seconds to, to respond. Um, you know, you're not faking anything by passing data through a view or something like that. We, we know we're really calling our stored procedure. Now, so that's why I like to use this as a test. So that's our stored procedure. We're done. We want to deploy it into the database. So now that we've saved it, just hit the little rocket. That will deploy it into the database. It was successful. No error messages. We can see our procedure was compiled and sent into the database. And let's go test it. So let's open the database explorer. Oh, so I left my calculation view from the last tutorial. Here we are in our HDI container. And now if we go to the procedures folder, we'll see our sleep procedure. We can right mouse click and say generate call statement. It has no input parameters. Uh, so we can just take what's generated and directly say run. And it's clocking. It should take... 10 seconds because the processing is put to sleep for 10 seconds and then it will respond back. So we'll wait patiently 10 seconds. Sure enough, time elapsed 10 seconds exactly. Um, and uh, it's completed. We know it works. Uh, not, not flashy, not crazy, kind of like our, our view. 
Uh, it's not like we're doing anything crazy in the database. We're focusing on the mechanics of how we use things without having to get too bogged down into uh, what each of them does internally. Uh, but yeah, so procedure that we would use to, to call any stored procedure here. Now, for step two, we want to find out how to add this procedure to our CAP service. So we're going to add it as a function and not as a regular entity because we want it to be executably called even through OData. And this is one of the new features of OData v4. It allows that. So let's go to our service definition, interaction SRV. And let's go ahead and add the function. Let me just add it in right here. Let's say function. Well, if I could spell. Function. Sleep. I don't have to name it the same, but I, I did. Name it whatever I want. Returns a boolean. All right. So I have defined that function. Now, unlike when I define an entity, the entities have a generic service handler. So cap is going to you know, do the selects and, and even on insert, update, delete, it does all that for you. Okay. But a function, it doesn't know what you want to do with that function. So it sort of just creates an, an empty handler, but you have to implement all the logic, uh, unlike the, the uh, entities and views, uh, which it's going to do for you. So we need to add a service exit to our service, uh, our data service, to be able to add the logic to implement this function. Uh, and what we do here is we can get a service exit, exit automatically just by giving it the same name. So if I create another file in the SRV folder named uh, interactionsrv.js for JavaScript, uh, CAP will see that and will automatically call this as an exit just because it sees the name is matching. Now, if you don't want to do name matching, you can also, there's a way, there's some syntax you can add um, into the CDS file to tell it what handler exit uh, file to use, um, but the name matching is pretty nice. We'll just go with that. So we've got... Uh, JavaScript file. This is where we can write our own JavaScript logic. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to cut and paste some logic because you don't want to watch me type it. But I will explain to you what it's doing. So what are we doing? We're going to get access to CDS. It is a Node.js module that gives, gives us access to the APIs. And we're going to say export a service implementation. And what do we want it for? On sleep, that's the name that we named the function, sleep. We could have named this XYZ, uh, and then it would be this on XYZ. Uh, and then we can call whatever store procedure we want or, or do whatever select statement or, or whatever we want. It's completely under our control at this point. But basically, we write what is going to happen when this OData service is called for this particular function. So I'm going to connect to the database using the connection information that CDS already has in memory because it knows how to connect to the Haunted database. I don't need to redefine that or reuse it or anything. I, I can just get directly access to it. And then I'm going to use some, uh, some Node.js modules that help me both connect to the Haunted database and then load a stored procedure. I'm going to tell it the name of the stored procedure is sleep. And then I can call that stored procedure. This is where I would pass in any input parameters to the stored procedure. There are none in this particular one, but I could pass them here, and then I get output parameters back from it. Pretty pretty straightforward. I'm going to console log it out just so we can record the fact that it has been called, and then I'm always going to return true unless there was an error message. Um, and then I'm going to, you know, return false if there was an error and, and log that error. Okay? So save that if you want. Uh, now, we are using some additional Node.js modules, so we're going to need to install those as well. So from the root of the project, just come here and do an npn install. Here, clear this. Clear. Do an npn install and save so that we're written to the package.json. The SAP module HDBEXT. 
and the little helper module SAP HDB EXT Promise Fide that just adds Node.js Promise wrappers around the standard uh, SAP provided module, makes it a little easier to call asynchronously. So we'll pull those two modules down, and they have been added to our project. If you uh, want to double check that, you can look at the package JSON and see that they are now part of the project as well. Okay. And that's it. Now we can do a CDS build that will pull the new service definition into our project. And then we can go ahead and do a NPN start to start our service layer. Once again, if you've done the additional authentication exercises and your project is set up for that, if you test this directly, you're going to get it not authorized. If you haven't done those, then just do the open in new tab and, and test directly. But if you have done those other exercises that add authentication to your service, then open a new terminal. Also CD into the app and then do an NPN start from there and then test everything via the application router. Okay, I do have the extra security in place, so I'm going to test that way. That is perfectly fine. And I'm going to add catalog and then sleep with the open and closing brackets on the end. Run that, and notice it's taking several seconds, should take 10 seconds to respond. Need the little Jeopardy theme music. There we are, and it has returned a value of true. So we know we've called our stored procedure because it took our 10 seconds to run. We could look back in the log, there's, there's, uh, uh, we can see that, uh, Sleep uh, actually got undefined. There was no there was no output, uh, so output results actually <laughs> was un was undefined. I have to check that. Maybe I'm just using the wrong uh, the the wrong object under output, or maybe it's that when there is no uh, there is no output from this store procedure, maybe results is it is, comes out as undefined. Uh, but you can see it's it's being called there. So now we have really gone end to end here. You have added, uh, you've created an OData function, which is a new feature of OData v4 and something newly supported in the cloud application programming model. That's part of your service layer, which is in turn implemented by a service handler exit. So we've learned how to do service handler exits as well. These can also be used to override the, uh, the generic service handler if you want to enhance um, the, the standard OData processing as well. But we've used this to tie into our HANA native artifact, and not just any HANA native artifact, like a table or a view or a calculation view, but a stored procedure as well. And with this, it brings us to the end of this tutorial series, where I hope you've enjoyed seeing really end-to-end, -end, starting with nothing, building a project, building a CAP project that also supports HANA native artifacts, adding an application router, adding uh, authentication, uh, real uh, uh, Fury uh, or SAP UI5 freestyle uh, user interface, and, and then tying it all together with some HANA native artifacts as well.